Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our latest vodcast. And this is kind of going to be a new talk. It's going to be beyond the common gastric masses. And what do I mean by that? Well, we have lectures I've given in the past year or two on benign versus malignant disease in the stomach. And we'll typically talk about things like tumors, adenocarcinoma, lymphoma, gist tumors. We'll look at their specific features. We'll talk about infectious versus inflammatory disease. We'll speak about the role of CT in detecting GI bleeds, be it from varices or benign ulcers, malignant ulcers, or just malignancies like a GIST tumor. And so what I'll do in this lecture is I'm going to give you some of the information that we classically would do in a lecture, going over a little bit about gastric cancer, lymphoma, and GIST tumors, but what I'm going to do is spend most of my time looking at the unusual things we don't see all that commonly. And I think it's important things that you need to recognize. So gastric adenocarcinoma can be focal, can be with an ulceration, can be diffuse and infiltrating. Key things, of course, are protocols. Give the patient oral contrast. We use water if it's a dedicated gastric study. Positive contrast if we're looking for a leak, perhaps. But you can see here the mucosal enhancement, the wall thickening. And as you scan down from the fundus to the body, the thickening increases. You can see ascites, perfusion changes in the liver. You can see this adenopathy in the celiac and gastrohepatic chain, as well as periodic regions. Image on the right, you see the infiltration of the tumor down into the stomach. This was an adenocarcinoma. Could this be anything else? Well, I would have at least given a thought to linitis plastica if the patient had breast cancer or just the appearance of adenocarcinoma with linitis plastica. You can see here on the coronal volume rendered views, the diffuse infiltration from fundus through antrum, the ascites and the carcinomatosis extending down into the mesentery. And you can see it very nicely here as well with the cinematic rendering, which gives you a really good look at the mucosa, at submucosa and gastric wall. And again, here's another image of that. We talk about the infiltration of gastric adenocarcinomas. Here's a patient presenting with gastric outlet obstruction. You can see fluid in the stomach, a bunch of air bubbles from retained food matter but the infiltration in the antrum very nicely seen. There's some stranding around the antrum. You can see it here particularly well in the coronal view, which really opens up the stomach. Now, could this be anything but gastric cancer? Could it be inflammatory disease? I guess theoretically, but it's just too extensive for me. The only thing I could be uh, wrong about was if this was lymphoma. We usually think about lymphoma as bulky involvement. Remember, classic articles talk about lymphoma as over five centimeters wall thickness, bulky adenopathy going beneath the renal hilum. But these days, we see a lot of lymphoma early, and so the wall thickening is not a whole lot different than adenocarcinoma and can look very similar. And here is some venous phase imaging. You can see along the greater curvature, there likely is a small ulcer, and you can see the stranding very nicely seen here as well. Now, you want to be careful when you stage gastric cancers. Ulcers do not necessarily mean the tumor has spread, but when you have an ulcer, you have inflammation and haziness in the perigastric fat. That's also a good sign for spread of tumor. So in the presence of an ulcer, you want to be careful not to overcall the presence of tumor. And here's just a few more images very nicely showing you the infiltration of the tumor in the antrum. When you see a lot of food matter in the stomach, to me, yes, the patient could have had a cheeseburger on the way to CT, but usually I'm thinking that the patient has delayed gastric emptying. Now, delayed gastric emptying can be due to many things. It could be due to diabetes. It could be due to patients with all sorts of neurogenic processes, but it also is not an uncommon appearance with gastric outlet obstruction, which can range from anywhere from a benign process to an infiltrating tumor, as in this case. And here it is again, very nicely shown on the 3D images. 
Third tumor we commonly speak about. Here's a large mass coming off the body of the stomach. It's solid, it's mildly enhancing, and it's mainly exophytic. That is the classic appearance of a gastrointestinal stromal tumor or GIST tumors. GIST tumors can occur anywhere from the esophagus through the rectum, but probably 60 to 70% occur in the stomach. They can be intraluminal, but the majority of the ones we see are extraluminal. Some are both intra and extraluminal. This one is mainly extraluminal. They can be mildly vascular. When you have smaller GIST tumors in the small bowel, they are often very vascular, looking similar to carcinoid tumors. The larger GIST tumors are typically not that vascular, and that's especially true in the stomach. You can see ulcers, these lesions can perforate, and they also can bleed. Here's a very nice look on the cinematic rendering, showing you the large exophytic mass with a model type enhancement pattern. A very nice appearance on these coronal volume rendered with cinematic rendering views of a GIST tumor. And here it is on the sagittal view. Another example, just to show you, GIST can sometimes be cystic. Here it's pushing into the lumen, but it's mainly exophytic. Don't confuse it with a pancreatic mass or an adrenal mass or a retroperitoneal mass. Sometimes it's tricky because is it a big mass pushing against the stomach or coming from the stomach? In this case, that dumbbell appearance makes it very easy. Uh, cystic GIST tumors are not uncommon. Solid GIST tumors can become more cystic if the patients are treated with Gleevec. But here's a very nice example. You can see here it's pushing on the left kidney. It's pushing into the stomach, but mainly it would be considered exophytic. And here it is very nicely again shown with cinematic rendering, looking into the lumen where the tumor is pushing, and also looking on the sagittal and a blank sagittal at the mass, which is mainly exophytic. Again, all very nice examples of a very classic appearance. And here's one more set of images. Now, the last thing I'll mention are B-cell lymphomas. I mentioned before that B-cell lymphomas can look like adenocarcinomas because we just pick them up earlier these days. In this case, you see a mass going from antrum to duodenum. Because it goes into duodenum, you should be thinking about lymphoma, but in terms of wall thickness, it looks more like an adenocarcinoma. This was biopsy, which is why pathology is in business, and this was a B-cell lymphoma. It was not an adenocarcinoma. Again, I've now covered the four biggest tumor types. So now this is what you typically think about. You see gastric wall thickening, you're thinking adenocarcinoma, you're thinking lymphoma, you're thinking GIST tumors, and of course, you would also think about linitis plastica due to metastasis. Remember the first case I showed you, I made the point, infiltration of the stomach, often with ascites, often with carcinomatosis. One of the most common causes of linitis plastica would be breast cancer. Typically involves the entire stomach. The stomach does not distend. The tumor is infiltrating. You can get linitis very focal. Most of the time, linitis involves nearly the entire stomach. And here's just a very nice 3D view in the coronal plane. And here's another volume rendered view showing you the coronal plane as well as the volume rendering with the infiltration. Differential diagnosis in this case, I would not be thinking about inflammatory or infectious disease. Differential to me is adenocarcinoma, versus metastasis. If the patient had breast cancer, that would help me. Again, linitis plastica is metastatic breast cancer classically, but it also is one of the appearances of gastric adenocarcinoma. So I've now covered the main things and I could stop there. Well, not exactly. Why is this lecture different? Because we're gonna look at other things. We're gonna look at things that can give you multiple gastric tumors like polyposis or even GIST tumors occasionally. And we're gonna look at some of the enhancing gastric lesions, whether it's an ectopic pancreas, whether it's a carcinoid tumor or metastasis. Now, this is a juvenile polyp, that's the pathology. 
large bulky mass in the patient's antrum. This looks like an aggressive malignancy. Juvenile polyps can occur in older patients, obviously, that can be very large, can easily simulate a gist tumor. You can see very bulky ulcerations. There's some mild wall thickening in the body of the stomach. Here it is nicely shown on the axial as well as a coronal view. You can see what this mass was doing was obstructing the stomach. Look how bulky it is. Again, an unusual diagnosis. I would have been thinking more of a large adenocarcinoma or maybe lymphoma or maybe an atypical appearance for a gist tumor just because of the way it pushes in the lumen. You can see there's some contrast enhancement here. Again, I'm going to show it to you on a number of different views, but a really impressive example of a very unusual tumor. I've only seen a few of these large bulky lesions. And again, it's lobulated. This was a juvenile uh, polyp. Now, you can have hyperplastic polyps. We see them not uncommonly in the stomach. There's always the concern, can they be malignant? Remember certain syndromes, juvenile polyposis has multiple polyps. In this case, these were hyperplastic polyps, but if you look at them carefully, particularly in the antrum, they're getting large and they look lobular and they have to be concerning to you. When you have one polyp and it's more than a centimeter, it's on a stalk, whether it's enhancing or not, I'm worried about it. But when I have multiple polyps like this, I'm especially worried. And what you'll need to do here is biopsy it. The challenge is there's a lot of polyps. If one comes back malignant, you're in good shape in terms of planning surgery and therapy. But what if a couple come back benign? Maybe you didn't sample correctly. Very nice example here showing you the polypoid lesions along the gastric curvature, the greater curvature of the stomach, uh, particularly increasing as we get to the antrum. A few more views showing that very nicely. And in this case, it was large polyps, hyperplastic polyps with areas of adenocarcinoma. So a very important diagnosis, a very, very challenging diagnosis. Anytime we see multiple polyps on CT, you have to worry about malignancy. And here's just one more view of that. And here it is very nicely with the cinematic rendering. You can see how we use the shadowing to show the polyps very nicely. And again, uh, th this is highly suspicious to me. Here's another view, volume rendered again. Again, this is a type of volume rendering, which is cinematic rendering. Cinematic rendering gives you better shadowing, which is particularly good at looking at the polyps. Here's a few more views of that and a few more views. I really like this case because we don't often see polyposis. We don't often see cancer in this situation either. So it's a really nice case and something that is an excellent learning case. Also, uh, cases like this uh, emphasize why the stomach needs to be distended in all patients. If the stomach was collapsed, you probably would end up missing all of these polyps. And I think I've showed you some cases like that in the past. Now, when we talk about gist tumors, I mentioned and showed you that before, large mass, usually 5 to 10 or 12 centimeters, mainly exophytic. I never thought about gist tumors being multiple, but there is a syndrome, Carney stratakis syndrome, where you have multiple gastric gist tumors. And you can see them here multiple submucosal lesions. Most are solid, some are cystic. I'll show you a few more images on the coronal views. Some push intraluminally, some are extraluminal. Multiple lesions, some go submucosal. Things you could think about would have been a polyposis, though it really doesn't look like that. Metastasis, multiple lyomyomas might be a thought. But there aren't many things to think about for multiple solid gastric masses that look like this. This was very unusual for us. We wrote up an article um, about this patient as a case report because it was really so unusual. Here's some more 3D volume rendered views. Some more. 
And just to mention, this is by Hannah Recht, really good article. This was first described in 2002. It was familial paragangliomas and just tumors. It goes through a number of the different um, um, variations in terms of germline mutations, which is very important. And it's one of the familial gist tumors, which also includes primary familiar gist syndrome and neurofibromatosis type 1. A very unusual syndrome and a very, very unusual case. And here's just a few more images on that patient. This patient, not surprisingly, underwent a gastrectomy. But again, multiple polypoid lesions, mainly off-the-wall exophytic. you got to think about multiple just tumors. Okay, what else? Let's talk about enhancing gastric lesions. And I mentioned three of them to think about. But let's do this. Let's take a break real quickly, and we'll come back and start with this slide. Thanks very much. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.